Hello, it's his folk. Time to enjoy card making with me. You've probably already seen that Carla Creatis has made an addition to her successful ocean series. Here I have the paper that I'm going to use to make a never ending card. The paper set consists of one push out sheet with all kinds of funny figures. The figures are pre punched, so easy to remove. It also contains 12 sheets of double-sided printed paper with 6 different patterns in A5 size. I show them quickly. I link in the upper right corner to another video where I show the sheets in more detail. By the way, in that video you can also see that the never-ending card I'm going to make today is also on the front page of Craft Emotions annual catalogue. Here you can see each set is double sided and there are two of each, a total of 12 sheets. Some of the figures are also on the stamps released by Craft Emotions. Here I have Ocean 7 and 8 and this is Ocean 9 and 10. You recognize the water here, that's Ocean 11. The circles from the matching stencil are also reflected in the pattern paper. Super handy to combine. Here you can see that the stamp has a different size than the push out figures. Please be patient, I'm busy editing a video with this cute octopus. Let's start making the never ending card now. For my card base, I use this white cardstock from Craft Emotions. It's a 250 grams A4 paper. I think 200 grams paper would also do fine. I'm going to cut this piece of paper to 8 inches. You could also take 20 centimeters, that's not a problem. But the reason I measure this in inches is because my scoring board measures in inches and that's the guideline for me. So if you prefer to measure in centimeters and you can also score in centimeters, take 20 centimeters. So now I have a square sheet of 8 inches square. To crease I use a metal creasing tool. I find it more comfortable and accurate than using a bone folder. We are now going to crease lines on every 2 inches. So that's on the 2 inch and on the 4 inch. I just slide the paper up to crease the bottom piece as well. If your folding leg is wider you'll also crease the line on the 6 inch. Mine doesn't have that size on it, so I turn the paper over and crease another line at 2 inches. I now turn the sheet a quarter turn and again crease lines at the same distances. If you work in centimeters, then you put lines at 5, 10 and 15 centimeters. It has now become a sheet with 16 2 inch squares. Or if you work in centimeters, 5 square centimeters. I'm now going to use my T ruler and I hook it to my glass mat at the top. That way it stays nice and straight. I put the paper parallel to a creased seam. So my ruler is along the left side of the creased seam. And I cut out the middle four blocks. If you don't have a cutting knife or cutting plate, you can also do this just fine with regular scissors. If you will be using scissors, you first poke a hole in the middle and cut out the middle four squares. Cut away the squares on the inside along the crease, so you can still see the bulge of the crease. You can always cut or trim away some more if it doesn't fit nicely. So now I have cut out the square. I don't need it anymore. This piece we are now going to use for the never ending card. And it's very easy if you just know where to glue. Here you see the hollow side and on the back side is the bulging side. To make a nice folding seam you want to fold over the hollow side. And you're going to smooth that out. You'll do the same for the other side. Make sure that the seams line up and that it's all very straight. 
That's best for a good working card later. Next I fold over the other seams as well. So I turn it a quarter of a turn and then do exactly the same as before. The hollow sides I fold round. This prevents tears and wrinkles in the paper. Let's see. Yes, and also the middle two folds I fold equally sharp. Look carefully to see if it fits together before you start pressing. I fold the outer two parts back to the middle. And now we're going to glue. That's what I use this glue for. That's the Craft Emotions Multi Coat Matte Glue. That's glue in a jar, water based. You can use it with a brush, but I did it with a pipette in this glue tube. I found it most comfortable to work with. So now I'm going to glue and I actually prefer not to glue on the glass but on a silicone craft sheet. I start by putting glue on two opposite corners. You will later see why. This glue sticks very firmly and leaves almost no spots. I use my bone folder to press the two pieces together and smear outwards to have the glue go to the ends of the paper. Any excess glue you can wipe away with a tissue. So two compartments in opposite corners are now glued together. Now I fold this side inward and I fold the seam sharply with the bone folder. And I fold this side inward as well. I open it again. Now on this side I had just glued. I will put some glue on the other square. So now I glue exactly on the opposite squares, bottom right and top left. So the glue is going to be on a compartment where the bottom is still loose. See, I have glue below and this one is still loose. So then I have to do glue here. And then I fold it closed. I push on from the inside to the outside so that the excess glue comes out and also the edges are secure. Excess glue I wipe away with a tissue. If you do this right away, you won't see any of it. Now the principle of the never ending card is ready. I fold the square over and over again and now I can fold the never ending card endlessly. Fold it in half, turn it a quarter, turn and unfold it again. At the end of the video I show you a sketch where you can see which parts to cut and which parts to glue. For the decoration of the card I'm going to start stamping the text. You nailed it, I'm going to stamp on it. Ideal text for someone who has graduated. I stick the stamp on a clear block and before I start stamping, I make my paper grease proof with talcum powder. I made an embossing pouch from a pantyhose with talcum powder in it. It works perfectly. It ensures that the embossing powder does not stick to the paper in places where you do not want it. I am stamping here with Versafine ink, a very crisp ink. I am stamping a little higher than the middle, so that I can stick an image under it later. I really like this font that Carla designed. I heat emboss with Ranger clear embossing powder. Under the card I put two sheets of paper to catch the embossing powder. And I clean the stamp with a damp microfiber cloth. I find this works better than baby wipes. With that you sometimes have fibers that stay behind on the stamp. And this is also better for the environment by the way. I store my stamps in a self-made laminated pocket. I link in the description box below and in the upper right of the screen to a video explaining how to make such a pocket yourself. I like to heat emboss, then a stamped impression looks even more beautiful. These patent papers all combine very well. Sometimes it is difficult to see which one to choose. Next to the text I want a block that goes well with it. I take this piece and keep the rest for another project. Again 
Sometimes I think it's a waste to waste a lot of paper, so I always think long and hard about what I take. I can so enjoy just by browsing through all those cute little patterns. Let's see, this piece I want to combine with this piece of paper. And let's see for the size. The piece of paper that I stick on, it should not be exactly the same size as the card. Then it will not fold over optimally. It's only about one or two millimeters at the edges. I mark it off, so I know I have to cut here. This also applies to the other side. I draw a millimeter smaller than the card is. I had scored on every two inches. So now I take an eighth of an inch less to cut for the height. Would you have scored at 5 and 10 centimeters, you end up with 4.7 centimeters to cut for the height. Based on this first piece of paper that I marked off, I can see if the distance is correct. Line up at 2 inches, move up a little bit and then cut. Now for the width, which is 4 inches, minus a little, or 10 centimeters minus 3 millimeters. And that's the first piece of paper for the card, and also the size for all the other surfaces. Since it is double-sided paper, I need another strip for this same sheet. So if you want to stick a piece on all the sides, you need 8 pieces of paper of this size. But since I have stamped the square, that makes 7 pieces for me and another small square. This is one of the ways I cut the paper to all equal rectangles. Just lay the correct size on top of the paper you want to cut and align it next to the guillotine. From this piece of paper I really only want to use this middle white part. Therefore I first cut a piece of 10 cm. 10 cm is usually wide enough for a panel on a card of 10.5 cm width. And this would be then be fine for another card. From this piece I now cut a piece for the never ending card. But also from this piece I would like to use the middle, so I cut a strip from it. I use this strip again and later on the card. I don't let a single piece go to waste. I always know how to use it in one way or another. So I cut out all different paper pieces for the card. Then this paper. Oh dear, that's so difficult to cut, but not using it is also a waste. Two inches and a little less. I zoom in so you can see it well. For the width, four inches and a little less. So now the final piece that will be next to the text. I want to use this wave for that. I take the pre-cut piece of paper to mark off the required piece. And this I cut out without wasting the rest. It is still a little too big because I want to have a very small white edge of the card visible and that works out well because now I can cut the edge perfectly straight with the guillotine cutter. It fits exactly. Before I start gluing all the pieces of paper directly onto the card, we first take out the scoring board. We will first crease and fold the pieces of patterned paper. This ensures that you do not get ugly tear edges in the paper and also, of course, that the card will continue to fold smoothly. The paper is shorter than 4 inches, so we have to move it up a little to still get to the center. I leave a very small amount of space on the sides. The 4 inch is right here and we need a center of that. We score at the 2 inch and you can see a nice straight seam now. This is also the right side of the paper that I want to have here and we fold that back over to the outside. I put the edges right together first before I press the seam and I go over it with the bone folder just a little bit more, so I have exactly a nice fold. I do the same with all the other strips. And then I now glue all the parts to the card. Immediately after gluing, I bend the card over, 
both outward and inward. This way I can see if the paper is in place and it folds nicely. As you can see, you can fold so that one time the text is on top and the other time the text is on the bottom. It's best to keep in mind that the image will always look nice when the image is folded and visible at the top as well as the bottom. For the next image I fold the card over once and turn it a quarter turn. If you want something different, you could also cut and glue the images vertically. But I chose the horizontal version and so I turn it a quarter turn. Now that all the pieces are on, I am going to decorate the card. I already glued on this side. From the corners of the octopus, I first cut away the white edges so it fits better into the corner. I will show this clearly in other pictures. I have already removed the shark from the push-out sheet. Usually, the pimples remain attached to the picture, which I cut off or fold flat with my bone folder. You can also leave them on of course, but I don't like that. Now I want to have the shark right here in the middle, but that's going to look ugly if you stick it on like that and fold it later, so I'm going to crease it first. I put it exactly between the 1 and 3 inches and then I can crease it in the middle, which is the 2 inch. That way I know he'll sit nice and straight and not get any ugly tear edges in the middle. I want to glue a fish in his mouth. Now isn't that funny? There's a very small piece of his fin hanging over. I can still cut it off. The shapes are very easy to remove as long as you do it carefully. So I have now stuck these on and I'm going to the next page. There I want to glue the beluga whale. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite fit. But you will see that I don't have to cut much off. I want to combine him a bit with some grass to make him stand out more. And for the pushing out of the grass, I have to be a little more careful. Now of course the grass is always too big, but no problem. I'll cut a little bit of that too. Now the beluga whale I'm going to glue at an angle. I will mark the spots that are hanging over. It is a shame to cut it, but that's the way it is. And it actually makes it very cool. Oh, I feel like I'm amputating his legs. But look, it's actually on such a little bit, so it's not so bad. And see, so in the corner makes it super cute. Now I won't bore you with my long voiceover. You can enjoy watching me glue these lovely critters on the card and listen to the music. Or just skip to the part of the video where I show you how to make the envelope. I do push small protrusions flat with my bone folder. This fish with the small ones I want here. It's a big big, but I find it a bit bare. 
and the starfish I can paste below and I add some air bubbles but it remains bare. The pieces I've left over I can nicely use to get more depth in the card. This is a little too busy but this can be done very well. You see that makes it a lot more fun. Now I find this piece a little too wide. I cut it a little narrower. The big fish is going to fall over the middle unfortunately and I do not want to fold it in half. So I will also have to crease it before I stick it on. I already push a little bit on the place where the crease line should come. And then I crease it again on the scoring board. I also cut off a little bit of his fin so it doesn't stick out over it later. And then I fold it over before I glue it on. And so I glue all the other pieces on too. The card is finished, you can fold it endlessly. Such never ending cards I like to send to someone who is ill and bored. But this special one is going to Tessa, who passed her final exam. Congratulations Tessa! Now for the envelope. I have here an envelope of 12 square centimeters. The never ending card fits in there just fine. It's one from the store. Now you can use this one, but you can also make it yourself. I have just tin 90 grams A4 paper. I cut that piece of paper square at 7.5 inches. Again in inches, because my scoring board works easier with inches. For this I need the backing, which is specifically for making envelopes. This is where I look for the size. And then the idea is you put the bottom of the paper on the 3 inch and 3 quarter line. See, 3 and 3 quarter. Then you're going to crease this angled line. Then you turn to the right and align the creased line with this line, like it's going through. And then I crease the second line here. Again. I turn to the right and align the creased line with this angled line and draw another line. Now you don't pay attention to the size where I put in in the beginning. If you do that you won't get a square envelope. The idea is that the center will be square later on. I use a corner punch to punch the notches and corners. But if you don't have one you can just use scissors. The seams we fold over to the back. I use double sided tape to seal the envelope at the bottom. Unfortunately I stick the tape on the wrong part. Later you will see that the bottom is fold over the wrong way. But ok, it can be closed. Actually the side flaps should have been put in first and the bottom flap last. I also put double sided tape on the top flap so the envelope can be sealed when shipping. You see, a homemade envelope the same size as the store bought one, only the flap is different. I'm going to use the homemade envelope to decorate. 
I'm going to use a piece of double-sided pattern paper for the inside of the envelope. The principle for both envelopes is the same, only the shape is different. What you do is, you put the pattern paper under the envelope. You allow the envelope to protrude slightly on the side. It will need to go in later, and if it's too tight, it won't fit. Now I trace the shape of the flap of the envelope onto the paper. Then I trace it down to just a little below where you still want to see the paper, which is about here. You don't have to put patterned paper into the whole envelope. Now I can cut the piece to size. The top corner I also round off with a corner punch. And this piece of paper now fits exactly into the envelope. We just want to crease the folding seam now. I slide it down a little, so that there is enough room for the adhesive tape. And then I just mark it off first, so I can see exactly where the creased line should be. I'm going to glue it down now, but only tape the top. It's not necessary to glue the bottom as well. It's tricky to do and it only causes problems when gluing and also when opening the envelope. I use a clear block to tear off the tape. That's sometimes easier than scissors. I look closely now to make sure the pattern paper is straight in the middle and parallel with the grease seam of the flap of the envelope. And look at that! Does that look cool, such a nice pattern on the inside of the envelope? It's a pity that I glued the bottom wrong way around, but you'll get it right in one go, I'm sure. Now I want to decorate this border on the front. I could just go for easy and take a strip and glue it on, but I always choose the hardest way and I choose different pieces of paper that I first cut narrower. Well, I find this quite difficult to cut small straight pieces with the guillotine. And my apologize that this, this is just out of the picture right now. The way I try to cut the whole stack at once and still keep it somewhat straight is by holding my clear block against the stack of paper and against the top of the guillotine ruler. I then have to remove my clear block again before I actually cut, otherwise it won't fit, but at least it's straight. It probably would have fit if I had turned my clear block a quarter turn. Do you also use your clear block for so many more things than just stamping? Let me know in the comments, it makes me so happy to read your reactions. Now that I've cut some squares of paper to size, I want to glue them to the envelope. I find the way I'm showing now the easiest. I first stick the first piece to the double sided tape. And then I stick the next one against it. I do make sure that I align on one side completely straight and that they stick exactly together. If you find this tricky, you can also do this sticking in the corner of your stamp tool or in the corner of your scoring tool. I put an extra strip of double sided tape on it. If necessary, you can trim it a little bit now if one block turned out to be a little too wide. And look, a nice strip of paper. Now I glue that on. I leave the largest piece of backing of the tape in place, but only pull off two bottoms. And now I just check to make sure that I'm taping the right side of the envelope. So here I have the sticky side of the tape. And then I first put the non-sticky part of the envelope and only when it's in the right place, I press the sticky part. And then I pull the backing of the tape to stick the rest of the strip. Now I'm going to put a little line next to it with a fine liner. I think that stands out nicely. You don't have to do that of course, but I think it gives a nicer effect. And so I finish the envelope and the never ending card. It is the same card I made for the Craft Emotions annual catalogue, with a few tiny differences. The link to that video you will find at the bottom of the description box and also when you click on the little circle with the eye in the upper right corner. 
I will show you a sketch in a minute, so you can stop the image if necessary to take a closer look at the measurements and at the places where you need to glue, to crease and to cut. I hope you manage to make this kind of never ending card as well. You see it falls in all directions. Now the images are swept, you see? Of course it can also be made with a larger piece of paper and with self stamped and colored images. Now I'll just grab my example just to repeat. As you can see you first cut a piece of square cardstock. I used 8 inches as the size. Then you crease it into 4 rows of 2 inch blocks, both vertically and horizontally, to create 16 squares. Then cut or trim out the middle 4 squares. Stay on the inside or on the crease line with cutting, don't go over it too much. Then fold over all the seams and make them sharp with a bone folder. Then glue the bottom left corner and fold up and glue the top right corner and fold down. Now put glue on the bottom right box and fold to the left and put glue on the top left box and fold to the right. The trick only works when the squares are cut out and that's why mine can't fold yet. The turning around only works well if you never apply glue to the same compartment. So you apply glue here and here and the other side you apply glue here and glue here. Glue on the bottom and glue on the top. That applies the other way around to the other side. Also make sure you don't have pieces of paper sticking out that could prevent the turning of the card. Now I will set a still picture here for you to capture while crafting. Save this video to your own playlist so you can watch it again. I'm very curious what you think of it and what you make yourself. Would you like to leave a message in the comments? Take in mind that I am also editing an instruction video for the box octopus card. Therefore subscribe and hit the bell button, so you won't miss that. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Happy crafting and I will see you next time. Bye bye!